My name is Adishola Oguni. I'm a professor of medicine at the University of Ibadan, Ibadan, and consultant neurologist, University College Hospital Ibadan. I've been involved with dementia research for close to three decades. So it's a pleasure being with you this morning. I'm going to talk about clinical intuition and skills relating to Alzheimer's disease in Sub-Saharan Africa. So that's a big challenge. The other one is the recent introduction of biomarkers in making a diagnosis. Uh, biomarkers are chemicals or materials in biological fluid, uh, maybe blood and cerebrospinal fluid that will detect the presence of disease. And there are very few of these that have been carried out in Sub-Saharan Africa. And the last one is novel therapies, uh, which are, and recently we know that aducanumab has just been approved as a disease modifying therapy. But when we think of that, the cost of doing that for one year, for one individual, is more than the budget of many communities in Sub-Saharan Africa. So that makes it very difficult for individuals with Alzheimer's disease uh, to be adequately diagnosed in time, for the diagnosis to be confirmed using biomarkers, and for them to benefit from novel, thera novel therapies for the disease. But it is important that practitioners in Sub-Saharan Africa are aware of the various ways of managing patients with Alzheimer's disease in the Sub-Saharan region. Uh, for instance, studies have shown that cognitive stimulation therapy can be beneficial. And so we need to ensure that we have facilities to make adequate diagnosis using clinical skills and a few laboratory tests that are available. Uh, the last problem is we have some limitations with education for diagnosis and treatment of Sub-Saharan Africa, as I've explained earlier, because of limitation in resources and all that. Uh, they also have a problem of manpower. Uh, neurological manpower is limited and they are mainly concentrated in the big cities. And it is possible that most of the patients who have Alzheimer's disease, they reside in communities. So there is that problem of referral between the rural communities to the larger cities. It is important that we have easy screening tools that can be used to make a diagnosis we must be able to look for subtle clinical signs that will help us make a diagnosis. People must be aware when there are changes in the behavior or in the ability of mm -hmm. their relations who are elderly to carry out their normal activities of daily living. So how can we train medical students and other clinical prof professionals to work around these current challenges mm -hmm. that have enumerated around the diagnosis and care of Alzheimer's disease in Sub-Saharan Africa? It is simple. The curriculum must be revised to ensure that geriatrics uh, and especially dementia is a major subject that is taught. The second question is, how can Alzheimer's disease diagnosis and care be made more effective and efficient as possible with resources that are available in Sub-Saharan Africa? Uh, this will be possible if we can develop simple algorithm for making a diagnosis. You have an elderly person who cannot remember things, who keep repeating stories, um, who cannot recognize faces, who forgets appointments and has problems with cooking or using uh, the bathroom facilities, you know that there may be a problem there. So raise a red flag and get, uh, at, get to medical attention as quickly as possible. I'd like to say that for us practicing in Sub-Saharan Africa, what matters most when managing or when treating or meeting a patient with dementia for the first time is to pay attention to your clinical skills. And that's what will give a clue to the diagnosis. Um, the fact, the predominant symptom, the pattern of progression, other symptoms, cognitive domains that may be affected and how they've been affected, and then physical examination to show that there are no other reasons to account for such things that you are seeing because of treatable dementias. That's what we should focus on in Sub-Saharan Africa.